Richard Wilkinson, and this is my discussion on liberty and freedom. So today, liberty and freedom are almost their synonyms. You look at the def dictionary definition, and they are very similar to each other. Liberty comes, but anciently they weren't. So liberty comes from the Latin word libertas, which means unbounded, unrestricted, released from constraints. It's something that's separate and independent. Freedom comes from the Germanic word free, which means belonging to a tribe and having the rights and responsibilities, privileges of that membership. So for this discussion, I, I want to use those two definitions. I'm going to say that liberty is the ability to act independently away from another person's will. You don't have someone telling you what to do. Where freedom, using the Germanic definition, is the ability to act within the community with the rights and privileges and responsibilities of membership in that community. Okay, so freedom has to do with rights that are connected to a community, where liberty is our ability to act by ourselves through reason for our good and the good of the community. We take responsibility for our actions and we are not dependent on anyone else. Okay, we are agents for ourselves. What John Locke would call proprietorship of self. Okay. Skinner, in his article, Rethinking Political Liberty, talks about these concepts. He uses different terms for them though. And he's talking about the English Civil War and the, the, gives a couple of examples. And one is the example over who gets to vote. And this debate is happening by Cromwell, a man named Reed, and a couple of others. And they're trying to decide who has the ability to vote. And they make a distinction. And they say that there's a distinction between freeborn men, men who are not slaves, but they're dependent on others. They are apprentices. They get alms from people. Um, he, they even use bishops because bishops get their position from the king. So if they do something the king doesn't like, they can lose their money. They're not, they don't have liberty. They can't act according to their own will. Where free men can act according to their will. They're men who have property who can take care of themselves. They don't depend on another for their income. So they can do and act in ways that other people can't. They can say what they want. They can vote in a way that is how they want to and not how someone else wants them to. Okay. So the distinction here is that freeborn, you have the rights of being in the community, but you don't necessarily have the liberty of being independent from other people. Okay. So looking at this, trying to apply today, I've seen about freedom of speech. So the Bill of Rights gives us the freedom of speech. We have that right as American citizens. But as a teacher, I can't go in my classroom and say anything I want to say. I can get in trouble for doing that. I can't swear, I can't bring up certain subjects and stuff. I'll get in trouble. Yeah, I don't have the liberty to do that. I can't act independently of my boss, right? I have to teach certain things. I have to cover certain things. If I am a free person, I have rights. I have privileges of being a U.S. citizen. And so discussing freedom, it's also, I think, worth mentioning Rosenthal Pupil's argument in his article. Because in some ways, I think he, he points this out as well, but he calls it different things, right? We have classical freedom and we have negative freedom. Classical freedom coming from Aristotle and Plato saying that um, freedom is the ability to act as reason dictates, right? We, we're in self-mastery, self-control, and we're using reason to do what is good for us and for the community. And I th would say that's liberty, right? We are independent from other people. We are able to act using reason and self-control and make good decisions. Where negative freedom is the, Rosenthal says this, defined as the ability to act without consequences, which doesn't happen. So negative freedom, as Rosenthal shows with his example of 
alcoholism leads to addiction. Okay? So we end up having the right to do things, but we're not, we don't have liberty. We become to neither freedom dependent on our addictions, on other people, is we don't act with reason, we don't take responsibility for our actions, we really don't think about the consequences. Okay? So negative freedom in the end is a lack of liberty. Because we are dependent on whatever substance we're giving into our passions, our appetites, where classical freedom, we have used reason, self-control, self-mastery, and we can act independently of anything outside of ourselves. Thank you for paying attention to my discussion.